This video is sponsored by Taskade, a real-time organization and collaboration platform. Make sure to check the description for a discount on your subscription. Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas and in this video, let's take a look at the roadmap to learn JavaScript in 2022. JavaScript is essential if you want to be a front-end developer or even a back-end developer working on Node. If you've learned HTML and CSS, JavaScript is the next step for you. It is the most important technology from an interview point of view and is something you'll spend most of your time learning. So in this video, I want to provide a learning path for anyone who is starting with JavaScript in 2022. Let's get started. I've broken down the learning path into four sections. Let's start with the first section, which is the fundamentals of JavaScript. Now this section is for you if you are a complete beginner. You need to start by learning how to run JavaScript. You could use the script tag in an HTML file, link an external file, run it in the browser console or even in the terminal with Node. But the first step is to learn how to run the code you write. Personally, I recommend an HTML file with a script tag and a console log statement that says hello world. Once you learn to run your code, you can get started with the different concepts. The first concept is to learn about variables. Variables let you store data. In JavaScript though, there are a few nuances that you need to learn which differ from variables in other programming languages. Start with variable declarations. Learn to declare with var, let or the const keyword and understand the differences. Then learn about the concept of scope when it comes to variables. You have global scope, function scope and block scope in JavaScript. You learn that var declarations are function scoped whereas let and const declarations are block scoped. Another important concept is that of variable hoisting. Although var, let and const declarations are all hoisted, you learn that only var declarations are also initialized with undefined. This lets you use a var declared variable even before it is declared. Let and const declarations, however, throw a reference error under a similar situation. Once you have a good understanding of variables, you then move on to data types and data structures. What you have to keep in mind is that JavaScript is a loosely typed dynamic language. So variables in JavaScript are not directly associated with any particular value type. Any variable can be assigned values of all types. The latest specification defines nine data types. Six of them are primitive types. You have undefined, boolean, number, big int, string, and symbol. You then have null, which is a special primitive type, an object which is not a data type but a structural type with which you can construct other data structures. Finally, you have function. Function again is not a data structure but it does answer the type of operator and hence made it into the list. Like any other language, JavaScript also has a few built-in data structures that you can make use of. You learn about arrays, maps and weak maps, sets and weak sets, and of course, the date object. A proper understanding of these will help you write better code. Once you understand the different data types, the next topic to focus on is type conversion. When writing code, you'll find yourself having to convert data from one type to the other. You can convert it yourself using a few methods that are available like to string, to boolean, and so on. That is called explicit type conversion. 
On the other hand, there's also implicit type conversion where JavaScript itself will automatically convert the type to be able to run the code you have written. This has both advantages and disadvantages, but type conversion is definitely a topic to read about in detail. The next beginner topic is about equality. You must understand the difference between double equals and triple equals in JavaScript. It is also a popular interview question for a beginner. The next set of topics is common to other programming languages, so I'm going to quickly go over them. You have loops like while, do while, and for. You of course have the break and continue keywords that go hand in hand. You then have two more loops, namely for in and for off, which are helpful when iterating over a certain type of data. Looping is pretty fundamental to any language, so make sure you understand how they work. The next topic is about control flow, which again is nothing new if you have some programming experience. You have if else, switch, and the try catch throw statements for error handling. Next, you have expressions and operators. Here, you're going to learn about the different operators like assignment, arithmetic, logical, conditional, and so on. The last fundamental topic to learn is about functions. Start by understanding the difference between function declarations and function expressions. Then understand how to call a function and learn about function parameters and arguments. When dealing with arguments, learning about destructuring and the REST operator which were introduced in 2015 is highly recommended. Then learn about scope when it comes to functions. How variables declared inside a function are not accessible in the global scope. The var keyword does not agree with that statement, but nothing to worry about in 2022. Finally, learn about arrow functions that offer a more concise syntax to write functions in JavaScript. If you've made it this far, that is awesome. Unfortunately, if you're a JavaScript developer, just the fundamentals are not sufficient. So let's now move on to the second section, which focuses on learning the advanced topics in JavaScript. We're going to start from where you left off in the fundamentals section, which is about functions and scope. You will now learn about scope when dealing with nested functions, about lexical scoping, about immediately invoked function expressions, and the revealing module pattern. Once you have a good understanding of scope, you can then move on to the concept of closures. You will understand that a closure gives you access to an outer function's scope from an inner function. Once you understand closures, a good tool to have in your pocket is function currying. It is one of those advanced techniques of working with functions that could definitely help you write better code. Next, you have the all important yet confusing topic in JavaScript, which is this keyword. You learn that this keyword is basically the execution context and introduces sort of a dynamic scope in the sense that you can call the same function with different values of this keyword. You'll also learn how to determine the value of this keyword using five simple rules. The rules are implicit binding, explicit binding, new binding, lexical binding, and default binding. Once you understand the rules, all confusion about this keyword will be cleared. Something that goes hand in hand with this keyword is the concept of prototype. You learn that every function in JavaScript has an object called prototype, which allows you to have shareable methods when creating instances of a function. You'll then learn about inheritance in JavaScript, which is possible because of the prototype and prototype chain. Next, you can learn about classes in JavaScript, 
which is pretty much a syntactical sugar around functions and prototypes. We'll then move on to the concept of iterators and generators. Next, you will learn about event loop in JavaScript. If you ask me, every single JavaScript developer must know about the event loop in JavaScript. It is what will help you create a mental model about the other advanced concepts and is key to understand how the code you write will execute. The next topic to understand is async JavaScript. This knowledge is especially required when you're making that move from a junior developer to a senior developer role. First, you learn about the traditional methods JavaScript has available for running code asynchronously. Set timeout to run code after a set time or set interval to run at regular intervals of time. Next, we learn about callback functions, which are basically functions passed into other functions as arguments and are invoked after some operation has been completed by the parent function. You will learn the drawbacks and about callback hell, which will introduce you to the concept of promises. Promises are a comparatively new feature that allows you to defer further actions until after the previous action has completed or respond to its failure. For example, wait till data is fetched from an API and then perform some action on the data received. Finally, you will learn about async functions and the await operator, which makes chaining promises simpler and easier to read. The last advanced topic you would want to learn is about the module system in JavaScript. You will learn how to split JavaScript programs into separate modules that can be imported when needed. You learn about module systems like CommonJS and ES modules, how to export and import modules, and also the distinction between default and named exports. With these topics in your pocket, you'll have a good grip on advanced JavaScript. The third section deals with client-side web APIs. Now these are topics you need to study along with the fundamentals and the advanced topics. However, I've created this as a separate section to let you know these APIs are not part of the JavaScript language itself. Rather, they're built on top of the core JavaScript language. First, you have the DOM. When writing web pages and apps, one of the most common things you'll want to do is manipulate web documents in some way. This is usually done by using the document object model, which is DOM for short. DOM is a set of APIs for controlling HTML and styling information that makes heavy use of the document object. This is something you should learn along with the fundamentals as quite a few front-end coding rounds during your interview rely on your knowledge of the DOM. Next, you have XHR and Fetch, which are APIs dealing with fetching data from a server. Learn this along with the advanced topics, especially async JavaScript. The third set of APIs deal with client-side storage. Modern web browsers have several different technologies that allow you to store data related to websites and retrieve it when necessary, allowing you to persist data long-term. We'll get to learn about cookies, local and session storage, IndexedDB, and so on. The remaining two, which are APIs related to audio video and drawing graphics, I would not recommend with the initial learning path. However, if your work entails something to do with them, then definitely go for it. So that is the third section. Let's now take a look at the last section, which is to do with tooling and miscellaneous. There are a few tools that help you with your development and are required when working in a team. You'll need to learn about linters. Linters are tools that check through your code and tell you about any errors that are present, what error types they are, and what code lines they are present on. 
Yes, lint, which is highly configurable, is the recommended JavaScript linter to learn about. A good second choice, which is more recent, is Roam. Have a look at what they're capable of. Next, you have code formatters. Code formatters are somewhat related to linters, except that rather than point out errors in your code, they usually tend to make sure your code is formatted correctly according to your style rules, ideally automatically fixing errors that they find. I would recommend Prettier as a good formatter for you to get started with. Next up is bundlers, which are tools that get your code ready for production. They aim at optimizing your builds, making them as small as possible before being uploaded to the server. You can learn about Webpack, Rollup or Parcel, which have existed for quite some time now, or you can start with the more recent ones like Snowpack, ESBuild or Wheat. Now a nice to have tool in your arsenal is TypeScript. TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript which compiles down to JavaScript that browsers can understand. With TypeScript, you get the benefit of not only writing your code with the latest features, but you get to add types to your code. This static type checking can save you from countless hours of debugging code and help you identify bugs that otherwise would have been found only at runtime. With that, we come to the end of this learning path. From here, there are a few paths that you can take. You could travel the road of frontend with libraries like React, Vue, Angular, Svelte, or even travel the road of backend with Node.js. But this pretty much is my take on the JavaScript roadmap for 2022. For me, this big picture is what I would have liked when starting with JavaScript. Hopefully, you find it helpful. Thank you for watching and if you found the video helpful, please leave a like and share the video with your friends and colleagues.